Okay, so what was the turning point uh, in the relationship between the grandson and the grandmother? When did that happen? When they shifted to the city. And why this distance happened or why the change happened? Because now grandmother, she could no longer accompany her grandson to school. Yes, exactly, correct. So she could not accompany him to school. He went by bus. Earlier they used to walk together. And uh, yes, so the subject that she read, he read over there, the medium of instruction was very different. And what was it about the school that she came to know from her grandson? What was it that about the teachings? Yes, she couldn't help him with the study. She, you know, he would discuss every day about the Archimedes principle or the new concepts in science that he had learned. And one day she was very shocked when he came when she came to know that they had music lessons, and she had lived in the village, right? And uh, yes, so people felt that, or they had that idea that. Uh, people who were involved with or who had an interest in learning music, they were not of good families. And that time that association was with generally like the beggars there and the people or the women with low class connections, right? The people who were not respectable. That was the opinion about people, that uh, people who learned music were not from a respectable you know, section of society. So she's very shocked. She's very upset that my grandson, I've been trying to teach him the prayers and I have been there, you know, like, of course, maybe she's not said it very openly, but she is quite upset. Yes. So what was the reaction to this knowledge? What was the reaction to this information that she got? How did grandmother react to it? She became even more silent. Yeah. So she spent more and more in time in prayers. She did not ask her grandson that what is it that he is now? learning okay yes yeah, so let's continue with the chapter so all if you look at the screen now so yes yeah, so she rarely talked to me after that she said nothing but her silence meant disapproval so she did not question about that she did not ask anything about that uh, like why and all but when she did, did come to know about uh, the teaching of uh, music and that her grandson had music lessons so she was very upset and after that she did not talk to him or rather she did not ask about what he learned so she was very upset the big turning point when they came to the city so grandson and grandmother could not be together they did not go together to school and yes in the village grandmother fed the stray dogs here she started feeding the sparrows. When I went up to university, I was given a room of my own. So for university, higher studies, he needs more time and space for himself. So he was given a separate room. The common link of friendship was snapped. Earlier they shared the room and he would discuss what I did in school and about the lessons and things. But now he's been given a separate room. The Joby connection tha, kya ho gaya? Alag ho gaya. My grandmother accepted her seclusion with resignation. What does this mean? Without any complaint, without any problem, she accepted the new change in her life. What was that? What is seclusion? Seclusion means ki apna isolation, apna alag ho jana, you know, like that she was there being separated from her grandson. So they were no longer sharing the same room. She accepted it with resignation. She did not complain. She did not raise a hue and cry about it. She rarely left the spinning wheel to talk to anyone. Now grandmother has started spending time on the spinning wheel and she spent a lot of time on the spinning wheel and she did not talk much to anyone. From sunrise to sunset, she sat by her wheel spinning and reciting her prayers. So what was it that she did most of the time? on the spinning wheel and she would recite the press. Only in the afternoon, she relaxed for a while to feed the sparrows. Yes, so there was something else that she did that was feeding the sparrows. In the village, what did she feed? She fed the stray dogs. Now in the city, so like uh, the writer had said that there were very less dogs or hardly any dogs in their road. So grandmother, she took to feeding the sparrows. So one hour in the afternoon, she would, you know, like, uh, yeah, so spend the time with the sparrows, more than that also. So while she sat in the veranda, breaking the bread into little bits, hundreds of little birds collected around her, creating a veritable bedlam of 
she repeats. So she would sit in the veranda, relaxing, and she'd break the bread into little bits, and she would give it to the sparrows that came. And what do you think is it? What is the noise which is created by the sparrows? What do you think it happens when so many sparrows together? What a kind of noise? Loud noise. There'll be a veritable bedlam. Hot noise. Chirrupings. Chirping is the sound of the sparrows. So there would be a lot of noise, a lot of, uh, you know, what uh, that, uh, they'll keep on chirping and create a lot of disturbance, right? So uh, some came and perched on her legs, others on her shoulders. Some even sat on her head. She smiled, but never shooed them away. So she was happy spending the time with the sparrows. They would make a lot of noise. She would talk to them. She would rebuke them. She would be angry with them. And yes, so that was the best time that she spent. And the sparrows, they came and sat on her head. And they came and sat on her legs and shoulders. But she never said anything to them. She never scared them away. They're going. It used to be the happiest half hour of the day. Yes, So what about it? So it, it's beautiful, isn't it, right? So grandmother spending time with the sparrows. And how would she feel happy? And how would she, uh, you know, uh, that was, you know, otherwise, uh, did uh, anybody hear her talking much? Was she there very talkative? No, she would spend her time with the bees and saying her prayers continuously, not talking much. But look at the way she interacted with the sparrow so beautifully. And it was maybe the happiest uh, time of the day for her. And the sparrows would come making a lot of noise. It would sit on her head and shoulders, legs. She would give them bread and she would talk to them. You know, unko dantna, bate karna, which she never did with like you can say most of the family members because what we have read she did not talk much she spent most of the time in the prayers and yes so after now her grand son has got a separate room he's going to university so there is not much interaction what about a life of elders how difficult it is the life of old people it is difficult isn't it so once upon a time, they were very active and uh, they have done a lot of hard work in their life. And uh, they were there. Yes, it's very, very difficult. It's very difficult, you know. And all of a sudden, you know, these changes, they happen, which we don't have any control of. And because of your old age, people make you feel that, okay, you can't do anything now. Without realizing that these people have contributed so much, the family, they have contributed so much to society. Yes, they can't share their feelings because nobody has time for them, which is a very sad scenario, isn't it? Yes. So we really need to understand. See, growing old is inevitable. So everybody, look at you, how you are growing up, right? And look at us. So within, uh, like, uh, as time flies, yes, so how uh, things are going to happen. And uh, Right, so naturally, old age, health issues are there, yeah, about knees and medical issues, these are there. But what about the emotional issues? How to deal with them? We all need someone to talk. We all need someone who understands. Yes, and of course, at times we should listen to them, what they have done, you know, like about their achievements. We have learned so much and they have done so much. So it is very, very important, isn't it? Yes. So I, I think so. It's very difficult to say this. Yeah, we should take our time and all and everything because we all are very busy in our own lives. But elders have a very special place in our family, isn't it? Yes, they do. So, right. So grandmother, how did she spend her time? She was very happy with the sparrows. When I decided to go abroad for further studies, I was sure my grandmother would be upset. So he's decided now, yes, after, what are the changes now? First in school, the village school, then the city school, then the university, and now is going abroad for further studies. I was sure my grandmother would be upset. I would be away for five years, going abroad for five years for further studies. And at her age, no, one could never tell. Tell what? What do you think he means by this? At her age, one could never tell. Okay, how long is she going to be there? Or when, I'm, when I come back, will she be alive? 
but my grandmother could. Yeah, like, of course, you could uh, really be sure that grandmother would be there even after five years, she's going to be hale and hearty. She was not even sentimental. Her son is, go her grandson is going abroad. He's also worried. I might not see my grandma when I come back, but she was not sentimental at all. She was not crying, no tears. She came to leave me at the railway station, but did not talk or show any emotion. So all of them went to see him off at the railway station. And uh, so he's gone there to catch his flight and uh, she's come to leave him at the railway station. Her lips moved in prayer. Her mind was lost in prayer. She was not, you know, like emotional. She was not in tears. Yes, uh, she was praying all the time. Her fingers were busy telling the beads of her rose. So she was in prayer. Her fingers, uh, so we read this, silently she kissed my forehead. And when I left, I cherished the moist imprint as perhaps the last sign of physical contact. So when like his grandmother kissed him goodbye on his forehead, he cherished that contact. That this might be the last time that she'll be with me, right? So he, wa he was, of course, very emotional, but grandmother was very strong. She knew I'll be here after five years, nothing's going to happen to me, right? So the grandson is worried, but that was not so. After five years, I came back home and was met by her at the station. So okay, she's at the station to receive her grandson. She did not look a day older. She still had no time for words. No time for words. She didn't talk much. No, she was busy in her prayers. And while she clasped me in her arms, I could hear her reciting her prayers. Even on the first day of my arrival, her happiest moments were with her sparrows, whom she fed longer and with frivolous rebuke. So even though when he came back, she thought now, like, look at her, she, she would be happy. My grandson is back. But uh, like, uh, yeah, her mom, happiest moments were with her sparrows, whom she fed longer and with frivolous rebukes. Frivolous rebukes? Don't know. Like how, how, what was the time that she spent with the sparrows? How did she enjoy the time? 